I enjoy reading books and I read a lot of books. Uh, well, not as many. So, you know, I think some people are reading a book a day or a book a week. I'm not quite that good, uh, but I read 10 to 20 books a year, mainly by audible. So when I say read, I mean, put into my system, ingest something like that. I consume a book, uh, whether it's uh, audible or uh, actually reading a piece of paper. Um, and I thought I would go over some of the books that I have uh, been reading over the last years. And uh, I'm going to kind of scroll through my Audible list. So you're going to see me looking down. I'm going to scroll through my Audible list of finished books and starting with uh, uh, further back uh, and then working forward. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of toss out the books and and say if I liked it or not and a little bit about what it was about. So uh, perhaps you would want to watch this and uh, you know, maybe get some ideas on some books you're interested in, or maybe there's a book you're interested in. And I say, oh, it was horrible. And you, you trust me. Uh, don't, but <laughs> check it out yourself. But let, let's talk about a few of the books that I've read over the last years. Um, the first one here on my list is uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And this book is just talked up by everyone. Uh, I, I hear it over and over and over how wonderful it is. And while I commiserate with uh, Victor Frankl's experience uh, in Germany as a an oppressed person uh, 80 years ago. <clears throat> really sorry that happened to him, and I am so proud of him for being brave. and And there were some good points in the book, but I, I, I actually I think I'm going to read it again because I didn't get as much out of it as I thought I would. Uh, people just rave and rant about how wonderful this book is, and I didn't really understand it to be that awesome. So yeah, we're kind of starting out with one that was boy, a classic everybody loves, but yeah, wasn't really my, wasn't really my thing. Um, let's see here. The next was uh, Financial Intelligence, A Manager's Guide to Knowing What the Numbers Really Mean uh, by Karen Berman and Joe Knight. And, you know, it's been a long time. I, I gave it a four star out of five review. Um, it was mainly stuff that I knew I, I've been in business for uh, a number of years and, and through the experiences I've had, I, I kind of knew this stuff. So it might be good for someone who hadn't been in business, uh, but I found it to be eh, pretty, pretty basic. Didn't, didn't really take me to the next step, next level. Uh, the next book, The Road to Ruin by James Rickards. And he is oft uh, quoted in, uh, libertarian circles. Uh, the subtitle, uh, The Global Elite's Secret Plan for the Next Financial Crisis. And he's not a complete whack job conspiracy conjecturist. There's some, but it's it's actually mainly some pretty good information. Um, it, it was worth reading. Uh, it, it was a long, difficult read for me. Uh, there were, well, I guess it would be for me if I'm the person reviewing it. Uh, I, I think for some people it might be easy, but I'm not very savvy when it comes to investments, financial stuff. Um, you know, if a couple hedge fund managers and venture capital VCs were sitting around talking, I wouldn't understand much of what they say. And so there was kind of some of that stockbroker jargon stuff in the book. Uh, but overall, I thought it was pretty good, worth the read. I wouldn't put it on my you know, if, if you're looking for book ideas and you haven't read any books in your life, uh, but you're literate and you're wanting to get started, I wouldn't say this would be one of the first 20 or 30 or 40 books you would want to start with. There are others that are much more important that are better to start with. Um, let's see, Brooke, uh, Brooke Burke and Mark Cuban, Business and Social Media. This was just a shorty book. And eh, it wasn't any good. Not worth it. Don't don't bother. Um, the Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, a must read if you're going to be involved with uh, another person, um, like in a business relationship or a romantic relationship, a friendship, something like that. Um, an absolute important must read. I put this. This is kind of uh, almost at the top. Uh, of all the relationship books that I can think about. It's pretty simple, but until you understand it, um, yeah, it's, it's, worth, it's worth reading. Uh, the Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, definitely a thumbs up uh, for that one.
And next up is Equal is Unfair, America's Misguided Fight Against Income Inequality by Don Watkins and Yon Brook. Uh, that was a good book. It was excellent. Um, very much worth reading. I, I strongly suggest it. It's a kind of a, I don't know, kind of a casual, um, it's not a deep libertarian, like consistent libertarian read. It's, it's something that even a conservative, or, you know, someone who hasn't really studied much, but has a general sensibility toward thinking that some of the woke stuff is crazy. Um, this book is kind of illuminating. And, and if you are kind of a, a slightly woke person, of course, if you are, you don't think of yourself that way. You just think of yourself as a, a person who cares about others, who who wants everybody to have a good chance and opportunity. Um, it's an interesting read. It won't probably be what you're used to, some of the ideas in it, some of the thoughts, but I think well worth it. If you're willing to open up your mind to a new perspective, um, I think it's it's well worth it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to give that one another four stars. Uh, you know, when, when I, the five love languages, that's five stars for relationships. Um, this next one, the equal is unfair. Yeah, that's a four star. Uh, next book, Rules for Radicals. A Practical Primer for Realistic Radicals by Saul Alinsky. And this was a reread for me. I think I'd read it once or twice before. Uh, but yeah, I, I read this two or three years ago, I think, uh, it, it, again. And boy, is it good. There are just so many points it brings out that uh, Saul Alinsky is just a, a like a sociopath, dirtbag kind of human being, like a Hitler, Mao uh, Stalin kind of guy, just like he doesn't care about human beings. He just cares about the end that he wants and, and by any means, even if the means are immoral, but it is brilliant because it is the strategy that's used by collectivists, Marxist leaning people against, uh, average civilians, just average human beings. Um, it, it, it talks about those are the techniques they're using. This is a popular book among political strategists of that ilk. And so whether, whether you're planning to be a political strategist on the opposite side or just want to know how you're getting messed over by some people or how they're trying to, very much worth the read. I don't know, four or five, probably a five, uh, five star review on that one. Um, yeah, everybody's got to read that one at least once, I would say. That would be my recommendation. All right. How to win at the sport of business. If I can do it, you can too by Mark Cuban. And this was another just kind of uh, quick article blog kind of thing. I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, you know, I, I'm impressed with anyone who starts with very little and accumulates a bunch of money, especially if they do it through more than one big hit or they actually put work into the big hit. Um, you know, if you just get lucky on one thing, uh, which very few people are wealthy who have done that, but Mark Cuban, he's he's done a number of things and he scraped from the beginning and made it up. So I was interested, but I would say that one, yeah, probably not worth buying or reading that. Um, the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Uh, compound Effect, jumpstart your income, your life, your success. I was not impressed. Um, yeah, it's you already know what it's about. I just told you it's a compound effect. You know, if you do things, they multiply upon themselves and it, it just becomes huge. And um, yeah, I would say that was maybe a three to four star read, not one I would recommend running out and grabbing right away. Um, but if you're a driver, if you're a commuter to work or whatever, and you're looking for books, um, you know, put this as the 20th to 40th, somewhere in that area of the books, books you read. Um, <clears throat> it was somewhat decent, but not great. Real Dissent, a libertarian sets fire to the index card of allowable opinion by Thomas Woods. Uh, Tom Woods, as we all know, is just uh, an awesome public speaker. It's funny. He's not like this handsome, muscular uh, dynamic kind of guy, but he is one of the most likable people. Uh, his, his stories are humorous and, and he's very bright and whether you do or don't like him for one reason or another, um, I think he's a very good, uh, content producer. And I don't love all aspects of his life. Got some complaints about some other things, but this was a good book. Uh, well worth reading. I'd say this should be in your top 20. Um, and as we go through these, I'm probably going to recommend about 
30 bucks should be in your top 20, but yeah, this is a very good one. Uh, it was a four or five star. Okay. Next book. People are going to argue with me on this one. The richest man in Bob Babylon, um, by George Clayson Classen. I wasn't impressed. Um, Long story short, I kind of thought I thought I would like the style because it kind of sounded like the style of the greatest salesman in the world by was it Og Mendino or something like that. It, it kind of seemed like it would be that old parable of the Middle Eastern traders and I, I and it was okay, but kind of the long story of it, uh, long story short of it is pay yourself first and save 10% of what you earn. And and maybe there were some other points, but I feel like I, I listened to the whole book. And now that I'm saying it, I remember I was driving through Kanab, Utah, uh, home of Lavoy Finnegan, or the, where his book took place. Uh, yeah, just a little side note that brought back a good memory. Uh, there was a huge moon that night as I was listening to this. It was just this, uh, what do they call it, a blood moon or some huge thing. That was cool. Anyway, Richest Man in Bob Babylon, I'd say get a summary of it. Ask, ask ChatGPT for a summary of the most important five points. And uh, yeah, that that should do it. I don't think the whole book is necessary. The summary is is worth it. Uh, let's see here. Next was Six Months to Six Figures by Peter Vugd. Um, I think I recall it just being eh. Just, yeah, like th there are other books, Tony Robbins books and such. Uh, you read some Tony Robbins and Tim Ferriss and some some of the other books I'm going to recommend, and like that gives you all so much better the same information, but you know much better, more digestible, in depth look than this book. So six months to six figures, nah. Uh, e myth revisited: Why most business, small businesses don't work and what to do about it by Michael Gerber. Read it. This is in probably my top three business books. Um, gotta read that if you're a small business person like me, like I've never run a, a huge business. I've never been involved in one. So I don't know if it would apply as much there, but definitely for a small business, if you're making less than a few million a year, this book is going to be helpful. And I actually make an attempt. I don't always do it. I try to reread it each year. It's short, it's easy to digest, and it is just, it's awesome. And I would even say, if you're not a, an entrepreneur, if you have a project going, if you have a YouTube channel and you uh, have some vendors or some contractors or whatever, like it is worth reading. I, if you use onlinejobs.ph and you're hiring virtual assistants from the Philippines or something like that, this book is very helpful. It's about how to create systems. It is very good. Definite, definite must read. Um, Tony Robbins, Money. Master the game, seven simple steps to financial freedom. Okay, love Tony Robbins. Um, huge, huge, huge fan. Uh, my wife and I went to his business mastery uh, event in Florida and I think 2017 or 28, yeah, 2017, I believe. And it was, it was good, it, it, it was wonderful. Um, however, Tony is kind of like Tom Woods. He's willing to give up a little bit on his reputation in order to upsell you and cross sell you and be a digital marketing uh, kind of person. And so this book is one of those books that's written to get you to read it and get excited and buy his products. That's what Tony does. That's what we paid 10 or 15 grand to go to this uh, week long seminar. And then 30% of the seminar was basically avatorials. Um, advertisements that the person would get up and, and talk about accounting. Oh, and it just so happens you can sign up on a monthly thing and Tony owns part of the company along with the person and they just are cross-selling you. So I, I, it feels icky, nothing wrong with it. It's not immoral, but it just kind of felt icky. So long story short, I gave that a five star, but I would say it's kind of a four to five star, um, well worth reading definitely if you're if you're not doing well financially and you don't know if you, if you don't have financial savvy if you're living paycheck to paycheck um if your transmission goes out and it would really mess your life up and you wouldn't just go into an account and take the money out and have it rebuilt or get a new car if you're not in that position then you want this book it's a it's a good book um 
Next book was uh, Not With My Daughter, A Dad's Guide to Screening Dates and Boyfriends by Terry Vaughn, my buddy. Um, yeah, Terry actually kind of motivated me to, or he didn't tell me to write books or anything, but he was just so cool. He did it. And I'm like, hey, that's that's cool. Um, Terry Vaughn, you might remember the name from Top Shot. He competed on that uh, show, uh, the reality show some years ago. And we worked together doing some some stuff for a while. He's a former commando from the UK. And he's a body language expert. So if you don't know how to read body language and you haven't studied that at all, or or very much, like this is just a great book for that. So uh, worth reading um, and give him a good review. And same thing with all these books. If you if you like them, take the time. I'm an author on a very small scale, and when I read a review, it just it's so helpful. If if you think the book completely sucks, just know that if you give somebody who doesn't have very many reviews, if you give them a low score, you're like really hurting them. And if that's what they've earned, fine. But kind of my rule is if you can't say something nice, don't review the book at all. Um, that's kind of been my philosophy. Um, next, Ape, author, publisher, entrepreneur, how to publish a book by Guy Kawasaki and Sean Welch. Um, as I recall, it was a little bit well, it's dated now, now that there's chat GPT and Amazon KDP and, and there's some newer things. It was a bit, uh, yeah, I, I would say that this is probably a three star. I wouldn't say it's a, a must read, especially if you're not planning to write a book. Uh, so we'll just go beyond that. The Power of Who, You Already Know Everyone You Need to Know by Bob Bodine. Um, very good book. Read it. It's a four or five star um, kind of goes back to that idea of uh, it's who, you know, not what, you know, um, and you probably already have people in your circle, your extended circle that have what it takes to, to have you achieve your wildest dreams. So that book is definitely, definitely worth a read. And next on our list, uh, hey, let's see, this looks like my wife and I share our account and I think she read this one, The Cornered Cat, A Woman's Guide to Concealed Carry. Um, so yeah, I haven't asked her how that is. I don't know. Um, the Four Hour Work Week, Escape Nine to Five, Live Anywhere, and Join the New Rich, expanded and updated by Timothy Ferris. Yeah, read it. Um, it's a very good book. Um, you know, it kind of depends. If you're 76 years old watching this and you're just interested in philosophy, no, nah, don't read this one. But if you are still out being a productive producer of value and you want to make money and you want to understand how things work, um, this book is, is very much worth it. Now, I will say that it is, I kind of see two, two schools of thought in the books that I read about uh, business that are kind of macro books, uh, like here's what you do to get rich or, or here's how you handle your finances, et cetera is there are the books that are kind of motivational and go all in and make it huge and risk it and, and don't work hard for 30 or 40 years so that you save up the scraps. Um, this is definitely one of those books. And, and I'm comparing that to books like something Dave Ramsey would write or Rich, uh, I love this book, Millionaire Next Door. Um, it was kind of the opposite idea, but Here's what I think is important. I think every young person, so if you're under 30 or 40 or whatever, um, you, you should read a handful of books that are the go big, go crazy. Don't just do the boring old thing your parents and grandparents did. You should read some of those. And then you should also realize all the people right now who are within a few miles of you who have a net worth of over two or three million probably didn't get there by doing the stuff that Tim Ferriss talks about and uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and such. So reading both of the books are very important. And I try to read both kinds of books. And I think it's a good, well-rounded kind of thing. So Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Work Week, absolutely yes. Um, Shark Tank, Jumpstart Your Business, How to Launch and Grow a Business from Concept to Cash. Eh, not so much. It was... Uh, yeah, all the, the stars of, of uh, uh, Shark Tank. I'm a, I was a big fan of Shark Tank. I, my wife and I used to watch it a bunch. If you're serious about business, 
um, and you don't have experience having owned a number of businesses, watch every single episode of every single uh, season. Uh, same thing with The Profit by uh, is it somebody, Leonis. Uh, but if you look up The Profit, you'll see him. Absolutely excellent. Um, that that show and Shark Tank, you learn so much. And yes, it is it is scripted a lot of it, and it's you know they want it to be dramatic or exciting. And but, but you you put aside all the drama part, and you can actually learn some very valuable lessons. This particular book, um, eh, not so much. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say that would be a good expenditure of your time. All right, next page is loading. Uh, summary of the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Um, yeah, it was a summary. So I, I don't even see the length here, but I'm guessing it was fairly short. And so that means uh, it's it's well worth watching or listening to. If you haven't read the full book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I do suggest that book to almost everybody. That's That's another thing that, you know, by the time you hit 18 years old or 20 or 30 years old, you, eh, there's a couple handfuls of books that you ought to have under your belt just to, your life will be better. This is one of them. Uh, so definitely read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. All right. So another summary, uh, summary of Radical Candor by Kim Scott. Be a kick-ass boss without losing your humanity. Yeah, I didn't, I don't think I liked it much at all. Uh, yeah, it was just a BS thing. Yeah, not worth it. Um, another summary here, but I'd say actually read the full book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Here's this dude from many, 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 many years ago before I'm born, uh, before I was born. Uh, he was uh, just a brilliant educator. And that book is so worth it. Just like how to get people to like you, how to, how to win friends and influence others. <laughs> That's the title of it. Definitely a must read for, for human, for human beings um, by Dale Carnegie. Uh, let's see here. The subtle art of not giving a frick, uh, a counterintuitive approach to living a good life by Mark Manson. Eh, I gave it a three star. I don't even really remember it. So eh. I, it's probably okay, but eh. instead read this one. And man, is it long. If this is the one I'm thinking of, it was like eight, 800 pages. It was crazy. Um, it was hour after hour after hour, which is good. Um, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. The tactics, routines, and habits of billionaires, icons, and world-class performers. And he goes through conversations with a lot of the people. It's like taking all of his podcasts that he did or the best ones, his curated selection, and then picking the best parts from them. And yeah, it was very much worth the read. Um, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, definitely worth the read. Uh, let's see, I did a couple of those summaries on that book. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Uh, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. This is by Robert Caldini, and he is the guy when it comes to persuasion. Uh, everybody knows his name. If you're in that area, if you are in sales or I was in law enforcement, uh, when I was an interrogator and an, an interviewer, child forensic interviewer. So kids who were harmed by adults, um, I had the training to get in and know how to speak with them and such. And, and I had crisis or uh, basically hostage negotiations training and all of the classes you take in anything like that, or how to be a good salesman. This guy is going to be mentioned. Caldini is just the man. Uh, and this is one of his big books, influence the psychology of persuasion. Definitely a good read. If you're going to interact with other human beings. Um, here's one I didn't care for much. Email marketing, a step-by-step -step system to build passive income using email marketing. I gave it a try by Tim Sheck. Eh, it sucked. Um, oh, here's a good one. Built to sell, creating a business that can thrive without you. So if you're planning to start a business up, chances are you don't want to work it forever. Kind of the, the formula is you start a business up, you run it for as long as you want to. Maybe that's just for a few years and then you sell it and go do something else. 
Maybe you start the business, you run it for 30 or 40 years, and then you sell it. But any which way, this book kind of teaches you how, how to build your business so that it can, it can kind of handle itself and that you have all of the important parts and pieces that a new owner would be interested in buying. If you're not going to sell it, it's still good to read this book because you're like, oh yeah, I should probably have these things in order. Um, so that's a very good business book, uh, very much worth the read. Okay, here's another one that uh, at some point everybody should read, kind of a casual read. The Lessons of History by Will and Ariel Durant, a married couple. Uh, they both, they each spent over 50 years as academics, historians. They both wrote a bunch of books. They were professors at, at universities. So uh, just a huge amount of experience. And I think they wrote this when they were in their 80s, if I recall correctly, uh, but just a ton of experience. And this is the best of the best of everything they learned over their combined hundred years of history, studying, studying history. And this is kind of condensed with their thoughts, their, their perspectives. Um, so unlike a typical history book that pretends not to have the author's take on it, they offer their take and it is very much worth the read. Crushing it, how great entrepreneurs build their business and influence and how you can too by Gary V, Gary Vanderchuk. Um, as I recall, that was a good book. Um, I, I don't, it doesn't stand out enough to be probably a five star, but it's at least a four star. Um, and if you, again, if you're a commuter or you have time, uh, rather than watching some TV show, uh, read this book or listen to this book. Um, it, it was worth it. Gary V is a, a motivational kind of guy. Um, yeah, it was worth it. Lean Manufacturing Explained, Ken Akdeniz, Ken Akdeniz. Um, it was okay, but eh, not really necessary. Uh, yeah, don't take your time. Okay, another book on persuasion, on communication. Um, Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as if Your Life Depended on It by Chris Voss. So whether, and he was a FBI hostage negotiator, interrogator kind of guy, um, and now he's in the, the free market world and advises big corporations, does trainings and such. So very good uh, negotiations, just, yeah, communicating with others. That's <laughs> another one of my 80 books that are in the top 20. Uh, that one, yeah, make sure you read it at some point. It, it's, it's really good. Um, it's a very mainstream, good book for any person interested in uh, yeah, just in life. You got to read that one. Entree Leadership, 20 Years of Practical Business Wisdom from the Trenches by Dave Ramsey. Very good read. Um, I have a ton of respect for Dave Ramsey. He is a uh, very devout theist and has some very different ideas than I do in life, but I like reading those kinds of books. Like Saul uh, Alinsky's uh, rules for radicals like that's completely a book you would think okay the democrats are going to read that and or another one you'd think okay the Demo uh, republicans are going to read that i like as neither a republican or a democrat or a moderate i'm completely not even in that area that arena like i'm so far different than all those those three groups uh lefties middles and righties like i'm nowhere near them but i like to read some of their content to keep myself balanced rather than just having this silo of the only content I uh, ingest is what I already believe. And then I get this confirmation bias. That's not good. So especially if you're not a business person or you're not a, uh, a conservative in terms of economics, if you're not a, like you're, you're not used to working hard and only get what you earn and save. And that kind of, if you're not that kind of person, open your mind and read this book. It's good for everybody. Um, Entree Leadership, 20 Years of Practical Business Wisdom from the Trenches. Very good book by Dave Ramsey. Okay, this next one is good. Yeah, it's, I, I gave it a five-star review I'm seeing, and it was uh, definitely worth it. Um, yeah, uh, Building a Story Brand, Clarify Your Message So Customers Will Listen by Donald Miller. Donald Miller is actually a friend of Dave Ramsey's. They both live in Nashville, I think, Tennessee. Um, and he's a, he's a Christian and he's very pro state. So he doesn't get it in some ways. He's probably gonna run for office at some point, I bet. Um, 
But despite that lack of character uh, that he would be interested in politics, this book is very good. Um, communication wise, not so much just verbal communication, but how to how to do messaging, how to market, how to brand your business. Um, and a good start to see if you kind of like the guy. There's a YouTube video that I actually I think he filmed at Dave Ramsey's studio that is um, the story brand one liner. If you look for that on YouTube, you'll find it. It's half an hour long. Uh, for the first five or 10 minutes, he explains the idea. Then for the rest of it, he gives examples and uh, examines them. Very much worth a half an hour listen or watch. And then also actually reading this book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Next, Media Control, the Spectacular Achievements of Propaganda by a guy who is very, very far left. Um, he claims a title that has nothing to do with what his philosophy believes in, uh, but he's he's definitely a, a far left, um, what would be called a Marxist collectivist kind of guy, Noam Chomsky. Uh, media control is spectacular achievements of propaganda. I would say that's probably, yeah, you read it and, and yeah, just, you're going to shake your head a bunch, but he also has some good points. So I'd say that's, that's definitely worth a read. I'd probably give it a four star, uh, something like that. All right. Uh, made to stick why some ideas survive and others die. I remember listening to this driving through Eastern Idaho. <laughs> I like how these memories come back. I'm not mentioning all of them, but every so often I am. Um, Made to Stick by Chip Heath and Dan Heath uh, Brothers. It is uh, kind of how, how a, why some ideas survive and others die. Um, kind of a self-helpy business kind of book. Um, if you're interested in being an entrepreneur, well worth the read. If you're not, you know, if you have your happy job that you're finishing up and you're going to retire, or you're just going to be happy in it for the next 30 years, no need to read it. But if you have that entrepreneurial interest, well worth it. Same thing with this next book, uh, Traction, how, to, uh, how Any Startup Can Achieve uh, Explosive Customer Growth. This is by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Mayers. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. Um, again, self-help business kind of book, really worth doing. And while we're on that, another book I gave five stars, just like uh, um, Traction, is Contagious, uh, Why Things Catch On. It's by John Berger. And I would actually say that the Traction, I think I recall wanting to uh, revisit that, like read it every couple of years, and I haven't followed up on it. But uh, yeah, that was, that was definitely good. Uh, okay, Contagious, Why Things Catch On. Good book, five star, read it. Skill with People. Um, this was by Les Giblin. And it was uh, it was okay. I gave it a four star. Uh, you know, I, I'm into persuasion, communication kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it was okay. Uh, not in your top 30 or 40 books to read, but eh, maybe worth having on a list. And let's see what's next here. Oh, we're getting into my man. My man, Robert Ardrey, my probably favorite author, or at least favorite writing style. Um, he was a playwright in the 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, something like that. And he also became interested in, um, bio, not biology, what is it? Where humans came from. Um, this book is The Territorial Imperative. You probably heard people like John Taylor Gatto talking about it um, or uh, G. Edward Griffin. I think they've mentioned it a number of times. I strongly suggest listening to this. This is actually, this author, um, I've let my wife know, and it's in our living trust that uh, it's my preference that as I'm laying on my deathbed, and hopefully it's quick, like hopefully it's not at all. Hopefully it's in a you know, quick, immediate thing. But if I end up being in the hospital for days or weeks or months, this is what I want playing in the background uh, rather than even music. His, just his voice, I, well, he's not the narrator, but his his style of writing is just amazingly, it's just the best poetry in the world. Anyway, I'll quit ranting and reading about how awesome he is. 
uh, the territorial imperative, a personal inquiry into the animal origins of property and nations, nature of man. This is the second book in his four book series, and they're all long. So it's great. You get to listen to this melodious style for a long time. I wish they were all longer. Um, but yeah, it is just just incredible. Robert Ardrey, uh, A-R-D-R-E-Y is his last name. Uh, and I, if I don't get to them or I forget in this installment or another, um, I just look up all four of them. They're all four worth reading. I think The Territorial Imperative might have been my favorite. Another one was, uh, oh, The Social Contract. And even though I don't believe in the existence of The Social Contract, he made some good arguments. Um, and a lot of what he says, if you are a, a consistent intellectual libertarian moral philosopher kind of person, there'll be a lot of things in there that you don't like. And there'll be some that you're like, yes, that makes sense. And others, you'll wonder how he miscalculated. All right. Next is hypnosis and NLP two manuscripts featuring NLP 2.0 and hypnosis. How to hypnotize anyone, the ultimate guide to neuro-linguistic programming training hypnotherapy and real hypnotism. Nah, it's just uh, by Kyle Faber. Nah, not worth your time. Um, all that stuff, like learning to be a hypnotist. I hope to go to some school sometime and do that. Um, definitely NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I love, it's one of those, uh, I don't know, guilty pleasures, or it's one of those faith-based things that I don't believe in faith and and uh, there's no proof. And this, the real science says it's wrong, but I think it's just got to work. So who knows if it does or not, but I, I believe in it. This is just not the way to learn it. All right. I am wondering if I should take a break and uh, make this be two episodes instead of one. Yeah, I'm going to end this. I'm also noticing that the video looks horrible and I haven't been watching myself, so I don't know how long it has. Um, yeah, I'm not that good looking anyway, so I guess this is probably, well, I'm a five or a six. Uh, so I guess this hasn't been too much of a disappointment. Yeah, so join me sometime if you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you've been jotting the books down, um, join me for part two at some point, And hopefully I'll get the video cleared up by then. Yeah.